Hello, everyone. Uh, so a lot of people voted, and uh, the vote was definitely in Bactria's favor. So we are going to be talking about Bactria for this guide video, and I'll do Parthia for next time. Uh, so Bactria, definitely one of the most interesting factions with an interesting development in Europa Barbarorum II. So uh, let's get into it. Of course, uh, Bactria is uh, located in mostly modern Afghanistan and also um, other Central Asian countries and parts of Eastern Iran. Um, at its height, it controlled areas all over there, as well as in uh, Pakistan, parts of India, there were um, Greeks that had come from Bactria that uh, established Indo-Greek kingdoms there. So, uh, let's talk about it. Um, of course, uh, at the beginning of the campaign, um, Bactria is simply a satrapy or it's not simply a satrapy, it's one of the most important and farthest satrapies of the uh, Seleucid Empire. So basically, you start out uh, s similar to Hayastan, even though Hayastan is technically not a satrapy. Uh, it's just paying tribute after uh, military uh, defeat. So uh, Bactria pays uh, tribute as a satrapy, and it's the same as Hayastan, it's 3,000 uh, every year. Um, so once every four turns. Uh, but uh, Bactria has the option of refusing one year. So let's say you can't pay, you can refuse one year. Um, and then the next year you have to give 9,000. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. But uh, Bactria, of course, uh, let's talk about the um your start position so you start out in a very good position you have uh oxiana here uh with its capital oscobara you have a bactra the capital of bactria your capital and you have uh, maracanda which is uh, the main city in uh, sogdia so you control three provinces at the start and actually your economy at the beginning is uh, not so bad. It's uh, slightly in the negative, so it's better than quite a few factions, actually. And if you increase your taxes, uh, you can get out of that situation. Um, but uh, you'll be fighting a bunch of battles at the start here. So um, actually, um, you'll, you'll lose troops and your economy will be out of the red pretty quickly. Um, in any case, I'll t I'm going to talk a little bit before toggling the Fog of War off, and then I will toggle the Fog of War off, since it seems like um, most people want me to show things. I, I just didn't want to toggle it off because I didn't want to spoil anything. But, um, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to give a spoiler alert, and then I will toggle the Fog of War uh, in a few minutes. But in any case, uh, at the start here, you start out with uh, um, your neighbor. Your neighbor here in the in the west is um, the Seleucid Empire, Margiana, and you start out with the diplomat there. And uh, you're in the north. You have a couple of uh, cities bordering you. You have Alexandria Escate, the farthest Alexandria, and the province of Scythia, up here uh, to the northeast of Maracanda. And you have uh, Chach to the north, the kingdom of Kang, right? Uh, and these are kind of like Saka territories. So even though uh, the Saka Rauka are way up here in the north, uh, they're going to come down and attack these territories. And these territories are not Hellenistic territories. So you're at the very fringe of the Hellenistic world. You're the farthest satrap, really. And um, it's definitely, uh, when you expand north, even to Alexandria Escate, you, you don't really get a lot out of it in terms of more uh, factional recruitment. So if we look at Bactria, one of Bactria's strengths 
is it has very diverse recruitment and uh, it has access to classical hoplites, um, native phalanxes. Uh, these guys are the elite Bactrian spearmen, very good troops, uh, very good against cavalry, especially very good troops. Uh, again, uh, levy hoplites. And you get a, a few native units, Hellenized, Pantotopoi. So these guys, uh, they're very cheap spearmen. They're like, I think they're the cheapest spearmen you can get. Uh, they're good as garrison troops, and they're, they're pretty good if they have support. So they have decent defense, and um, uh, they have shields. So actually, they're not so bad. Uh, they're much worse than even levy hoplites. So uh, they're, they're best for... But, but they have higher numbers, so they're good as garrisons. And uh, in a pinch, if you, if you support them, they're not so bad. But uh, these guys are actually surprisingly good, the uh, Bactrian uh, skirmishers here. So, um, yeah, the, you can see they have much higher melee attack and much higher defense than the Pantotopoi, even though their numbers are a little less. And they have javelins, too. So they're not so bad. Those guys are good. And you have a Conti Stai that are pretty useless, as well as uh, some Slingers, which are very good, cheap uh, garrison troops as well, effective on walls especially, as well as uh, cheap archers, Hellenistic archers. And uh, additionally, you also have access to quite a lot of cavalry right at the start here. So you have uh, Hellenistic Light Lancers, the Xistoforoi, right? And you also have uh, Bactrian horse archers, which are actually pretty darn good. And why are they good? They have better armor and uh, better melee attack and defense than um, most other horse archers. So they have their better... Their missile attack is a bit lower, though. So uh, they're better than the Saka horse archers in melee, but uh, they have lower missile attack. Uh, so they're... Um, but they're not bad, like they're better than the Armenian horse archers, which um, have lower missile attack and lower melee. Uh, so um, yeah, these guys are good. Don't underestimate these guys, because if uh, if they get into a melee fight with uh, Saka and Scythian horse archers, uh, the Bactrian horse archers can win. Um, and you also get these guys, the Bactrian uh, horsemen, Bactrian medium cavalry. And these guys are really good. They're better than um, Eastern Medium Cavalry. And they're better than um, the Median Medium Cavalry. They're better than... Um, what's that other one? They're better than the regular Hellenistic Medium Cavalry, the Hippeus, which is pretty comparable to the um, Hellenistic Light Lancers. And uh, these guys... Uh, they're not, they're not like cataphracts or anything, but they're pretty good. Uh, they're not bad. They're kind of like half cataphracts. They're fast and they're good. Uh, they have very good charge. They're a very effective unit. Uh, again, they can, they can do some damage. They can do some damage, especially if you get a good charge off, even against uh, Saka nobles. Or uh, the general's bodyguard, you can do some heavy damage to them with your charge bonus. Um, but additionally, um, you get access to a lot of uh, local type units. So um, if we look at your other uh, cities here that don't have. Um, so only Bactra, only the city of Bactra itself gets access to those interesting Bactrian native units, or not native units, um, like Hellen uh, Hellenic Greek, Greek st style units. So uh, you get those in Bactria because um, you've got a Hellenistic uh, colony building here, and you have a uh, polis. So Bactria is a, has a real Hellenistic polis, so that's why you get access to all of these great um, Hellenistic units. And the problem is that your other cities, because you're on the fringes here of the Hellenistic world, you don't 
uh, get access uh, to those units. So you have, uh, again, in the capital, you have a, you're a satrapy. So this is your government building, your main government building. But your other cities are satrapal districts. So these are districts of the satrapy. So that's why you get native recruitment, local recruitment, and you still get very good troops. Um, I really like these uh, Arakosian cavalrymen. Um, I don't know why. I Javelin cavalry, uh, I don't usually like them that much, but I don't know. I like these guys. They're, they're, um, they have good stamina, and uh, their missile attack is okay. Uh, but I don't know. I like them. But you also get access to, and you can see they're, they're slightly better than the uh, Iranian Javelin Cavalry. But you also get access to Iranian Medium Cavalry, uh, which is not bad, not great, but not bad. And you can retrain them in a lot of locations. So that's why it's important uh, to have these guys. These guys are a good unit to have. You also get um, East Iranian Archer Spearmen. And these guys, um, their missile attack is not that great, but uh, it's only five. But I mean, if you compare it to the um, Hellenistic archers, they're better. They're better in every way because you can see the melee of the Hellenistic archers is two attack and four defense. But if you look at the um, stats of the Iranian archer spearmen, much better. So they can actually hold... Uh, even a cavalry attack for more than a second, right? Um, additionally, uh, you have access to uh, Akkadian heavy infantry. So uh, a lot of people have been asking, why is there Akkadian heavy infantry in uh, the Far East? And that's because um, Alexander sent a lot of Babylonian troops to the East uh, as like military settlers and colonists, things like that. So that's why uh, some of these um, cities in the east here have access to uh, Babylonian infantry. And of course, natively, they're called Akkadians, so uh, they're Akkadian. That's why it's Akkadian heavy infantry. And uh, they're a good, very good unit, uh, good against cavalry. Uh, you also get access to native phalanx troops. Not the best, but uh, pretty good against cavalry. And you also get uh, some median troops as well. Uh, because again, they were median uh, troops were also sent to the east in some places as well. And actually, the medians are a little better, right? Yeah, the medians are good. They're better than uh, the more generic Iranian medium cavalry. So uh, yeah, the medians are very nice. Very good unit. So let's... Um, dive into Bactria a little bit more. So at the beginning of the campaign, um, Bactria gets access to missions. So there are some factions in uh, Europa Barbarorum II that have missions. And uh, I have Pontus is one of them. Um, and Bactria is another. And Bactria has very a very nice mission system, series of missions. Uh, so the first one, uh, you start out, you notice, you start out with a couple of big uh, armies here. Actually, let me... Where is this guy? Yeah, so you have a couple of uh, armies here. And you have enough troops for... Uh, there, there they are, sorry. So you have uh, Demetrios and Diodotos. Right, so Diodotos was actually the one that declared official independence from um, the Seleucids. Um, and they're pretty good armies. So you have a mix of um, Arachosian, Bactrian, and Iranian cavalry. And you also have, um, in this other army, you have some horse archers, uh, Daha, uh, Dahan horse archers. So kind of like Parthian horse archers, but not exactly. Uh, and you have a unit of the Bactrian half cataphracts there, the Bactrian medium cavalry. And, um, oh, one other thing to talk about. So the general's bodyguard of the Bactrians, again, it's the Hellenistic one, the Somatophylakis. 
Um, they're not bad, but I mean, they're not as good as uh, the Saka General's Bodyguard, which has better melee stats a little bit. Uh, higher attack, I believe. Uh, a little bit lower charge, though, for them. But they're also great horse archers. Uh, so not as good as those guys. Uh, not as good as the Armenian Bodyguard. The Armenian Bodyguard is the uh, strong cataphract cavalry. Better in both attack and defense and charge. And uh, not as good as the Parthian Bodyguards. The Parthian Bodyguards are devastating. They are very good. Uh, so, good, but not great. General's bodyguards, better than the Nabataean ones. Better than, uh, the Sabaean general's bodyguard, that's for sure. Uh, but not great. Um, so, Bactria gets missions. The first mission is, uh, to take out two, uh, Saka armies, rebel Saka army, so not the Saka Rauka, that are a major faction up here. But you get two Saka rebel armies appearing in uh, Sogdia, and in in your eastern, uh, in eastern, uh, sorry, western Bactria. So um, you're gonna want to keep your armies uh, close by here and not actually uh, go off conquering just yet, because uh, every time you complete a mission you get more Hellenistic colonists. And those colonists are very important. So you've got Bactria here with Hellenistic polis, right? So in order to construct a polis, you need to have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let me check the building browser. Uh, the game is so complicated, it's impossible to remember everything. Um, where, where's the colony here? Yeah, here it is. So, um, yeah, there's also colonization. So uh, you you can also do colonization here. But uh, in any case, you need colonists in order to build a Hellenistic polis, as well as the uh, settler frontier posts. Right, and these buildings, they give you access to a lot of units, Hellenistic units. So the good Bactrian cavalry, uh, Bactrian horse archers, hoplites, levy hoplites. And the, remember, these hoplites and levy hoplites, they will crush Eastern infantry. So the Saka, um, the Saka infantry and the... Um, Iranian infantry, local Iranian infantry that the Parthians or the Seleucids might send at you. Um, hoplites will crush them. And the Bactrian cavalry is not bad. It will counter Saka and Parthian cavalry that they send at you. So uh, it's very important to have access to these units. And um, the, the way you get access to them is to have colonists. And in order to get colonists... A uh, couple of different things. Uh, you can have a Hellenistic metropolis. And when you have a metropolis, you will get a colonist. You, can, you will get a group of colonists once every 18 turns. Right? So you'll get one. And that point will allow you to um, get a polis or a, a settler frontier post. Right? But uh, the issue is... You might want to save up your colonists to upgrade to a Hellenistic metropolis, though, in um, Bactra itself, because that'll give you access to more elite troops, I believe. But uh, you also want to upgrade your other cities here, right? So Oskobara and Marakanda, because uh, the other thing is, as your empire starts getting bigger, one of the big issues in Europa Barbarorum II is not being able to retrain your troops or having to wait. And then as you're waiting, you have to supplement them with uh, inferior troops that are more widely available, like uh, Pantodapoi, right? So, and nobody wants to overwhelm their enemies with Pantodapoi. It's, it's very hard. So I'm sorry 
I'm sorry I keep attacking the Pantotopoi. They're just the go-to levy spear unit out here in the in the far east here. So um, as you complete those missions, you get colonists. The first mission, I'm going to spoil the first couple missions because it's important to know about, especially the second one. So the first mission, you got to take out these Saka armies, these rebel armies. Do it. Do it. And then you'll get uh, a colony point. And actually, you can uh, spend... In order to upgrade to a polis in um, Oskobara, for example, you need to upgrade the farms. And uh, you have strategic fortifications, so actually that's the other requirement uh, you need for uh, colony building for the polis. Uh, so actually, if you upgrade the farms in Oskobara, um, once you complete that first mission, you'll be able to uh, construct Hellen Hellenistic polis in Oskobara, and you'll be able to recruit uh, hoplites and things like that in Oskobara as well. And that will really um, give you a more Hellenistic-looking army and make it easier to retrain uh, your starting troops here, which, of course, you have some Hellenistic troops, not too many. Uh, you have some Phalangites and um, Bactrian cavalry, Bactrian horse archers. Uh, yeah, Bactrian cavalry. So you'll need Hellenistic polis to be able to retrain them. And if you can only retrain them in Bactria, then uh, that's, not, that's not good because you won't be able to retrain them that often. Right, as we see in the Armenia campaign, um, even the most uh, widespread of uh, Eastern medium cavalry, like uh, the Cappadocians, um, I've had to wait a few turns to retrain them sometimes, or send them f to far flung edges of my empire to be retrained. And that's just not good. It's not logistically feasible to run your empire that way. And the second mission, after doing that, is uh, to capture Alexandria Escate. So I think, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I'm going to toggle the fog of war. So Alexandria Escate, the farthest Alexandria. Uh, that's your second mission, to take it. And you have to wait. Don't take it before the mission is assigned to you. Because if you have already taken it, you won't be able to complete that mission, and that's it. The missions will be done. You won't be able to go further than that. Um, and then um, once you take Alexandria Escate, when it tells you to, uh, then you'll get another colony point, and that'll be great. And the advisor will pop up and tell you you have a colony point uh, to spend. So you can ignore them and collect your colony points, or you can... Uh, the way to get the advisor to be quiet about it is to upgrade uh, to a polis, but eh, whatever. In any case, taking Alexandria, wait on it. Defeat the two Saka armies in the west, and then take Alexandria once you get the second mission assigned to you. Okay, otherwise it'll be annoying. Okay. Um, other things. You have a nomad camp here to the east. So it's uh, pretty well protected by mountains, so it's hard to reach. Uh, so it's actually a pretty good place to mount a defense here. If you take Alexandria, Escate, and Haumavarga, the Haumavarga province, Haumavarga, as I said in the Saka, Rauka video, was a, tr a tribe of Saka. Um, Hama being the hallucinogenic plant, so these are maybe the Hama boilers or the Hama drinkers, uh, Saka tribe. In any case, it's a camp, so uh, you're going to be severely limited in uh, what you can do here because uh, settled factions cannot convert camps. Only nomad factions can, like the Saka, the Sarmatians, uh, the Nabataeans, the only... The, and the Numidians as well. The only settled faction that can um, transform camps into cities is a Kingdom of the Bosporus. 
to the west here in uh, the Crimea. So only Bosporus can uh, convert camps into cities, into settled cities. Now, um, of course, uh, that means that you'll want to put a client ruler, allied government, and you'll get access to basic uh, Saka units uh, here. And in Alexandria as well, the native population was mostly um, Saka. So you'll get access to Saka units here. Um, other things about Bactria. One of the most important historical... Uh, okay, thinking about it historically, purely historically. Bactria declared independence and then established a very powerful kingdom, so they were able to take a lot of these eastern uh, territories, right, from the Seleucids. As the Seleucid eastern satrapies fell apart, uh, the Bactrians were able to... the Bactrian Greeks were able to take control of a lot of them. And at their height, they had a pretty nice-looking empire. Um, but the Saka happened. So the Saka um, got pushed by other nomadic tribes, uh, into Bactria, and uh, the Saka actually were able to conquer these uh, cities from the Greeks. But uh, the Greeks were not done yet. The Bactrian Greeks were not done yet. So they had taken some territory in India and Pakistan, modern Pakistan, um, including Taxila, right? So you have your other neighbor here is Taxila. And um, this is Parapamesidae. So this is another province you want to take because uh, this is actually Alexandria Parapamesidae. Paropamisadai. Paropamisadai. So this is actually Alexandria Paropamisadai. And you'll want to take it. Um, because even though it's kind of like a buffer between you and Taxila, uh, you actually want to take these provinces in India because the Greeks... Uh, the Bactrians, they moved into India and established the Indo-Greek kingdoms. And uh, the Indo-Greeks uh, were pretty pretty powerful local uh, kings. Menander, the most famous of them, converted to Buddhism. And they, they actually, the Indo-Greeks were actually the first ones, I believe, uh, to make Buddha statues, right? So, um, because before that, I don't think they portrayed the Buddha or made statues of him. So the Indo-Greeks did that. And uh, there's actually a, a holy text in Theravada Buddhism called the uh, Milinda Panha, the questions of King Menander. And actually it's a Buddhist guru answering the questions of the Indo-Greek king, uh, Menander. So a very nice text, and it's preserved. So uh, at least partially in the Pali language. So you can read that if you'd like. But in any case, as you can probably tell, when you take these territories, you get access to Indian units. And then as you uh, get more powerful and you upgrade uh, your colonies and things like that, in India, you get access to Indo-Greek units. And uh, I'm not sure of the list of... Uh, I haven't seen the list of Indo-Greek units in um, EB2, but I know about them from EB1, and they're very nice units. So actually, that will allow you to make a nice Indian elephant, um, Indo-Greek, Hellenistic-style army, and that army will be... Uh, very, very nice indeed. Uh, so I actually haven't personally been able to do that uh, yet in my testing of Bactria um, because uh, uh, the reforms for Bactria, let me talk a little bit about the reforms. So uh, for the, uh, the thing about Bactria is that you start out as a um, colony, right? You start out as a colony of the, uh, not as a colony, as a satrapy of the Seleucids. And uh, you, uh, the reforms path basically makes you a um, 
real kingdom, a real kingdom and a real empire. So what you have to do is uh, you have to refuse you have to refuse the tribute and then four turns later you have to refuse the tribute again and then that's it. You're at war with your Seleucid overlords. So um, what you have to do to get independence from the Seleucids it's a little easier than the Hayastan war with the Seleucids I believe um, if you refuse the tribute there. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to win four battles um, and of course, these battles have to be with uh, family members, real, real Seleucid armies. So not, not like a captain leading one unit. No, real Seleucid armies, uh, led by family members. And your army also has to be led by a family member. Historically, it would be good if it was Diodotos. He was the one who really declared the independence of Bactria. Um, but, um... You have to win four battles, and you have to take uh, three regions from the Seleucids, or at least three. And uh, if you take two regions and you win four battles, then uh, you can be forgiven and become a satrapy again, but who wants that? Uh, so you want to take that third province and get your independence. So once you get... Here's the other thing. Um, Taxila, at the beginning, is allied with um, the Seleucids because, of course, at that time, the Mauryans uh, were able to... Taxila, of course, represents a governor of the Mauryans, of the Mauryan Empire. So, um, uh, if you attack Taxila in your quest to get Indo-Greek troops, uh, you will induce the wrath of the Seleucids. So, you don't want to do that until you have independence from the Seleucids. So uh, what you... Uh, yeah, again, four battles, three provinces, and boom, you get independence. So once you get independence, you'll get um, access to... You'll be able to upgrade this satrapy building in Bactria. And uh, once you upgrade the satrapy building... Um, yeah, it doesn't show up here because, uh, I just started the campaign, right? I, so, um, you get the Basilike Patrice building and you want to create that in Bactria. And this gives you elite units, uh, like the heavy Macedonian cavalry, like the Hitairoi, um, siege equipment, um, Hippaspists, the elite Hellenistic infantry. So uh, that's going to be very good for you. And it's it's better than satrapy in every way because you won't get the penalty to... You won't get penalties, right? Once you upgrade your government buildings. So uh, yeah, then you will have independence. And it'll allow you to build um, the factional government, which is satrapy, uh, outside of back, uh, the city of uh, Bactria itself. Right, so you'll be able to upgrade uh, your satrapal district buildings, and you'll be able to make satrapies in um, India as well, and that will um, help you get access to Indo-Greek units as well. So, uh, again, for historical expansion, uh, you pretty much have to follow um, the reforms path for Bactria. You declare your independence from the Seleucids, take a few provinces, and then you can move into India and start conquering these uh, cities. And pretty much most of these cities uh, were taken by the Indo-Greeks. Uh, Taxila, um, I'm not sure about Sagala, I'm not sure about um, Girnar. But uh, at least Opiana and Taxila and uh, Alexandria Paropamisade uh, were taken by the Indo-Greeks. And, uh, you know, maybe Sagala too. Uh, but in any case, again, historically, the Saka took Bactria and then eventually the Saka moved in to the Indo-Greek space and took Taxila and all these other cities and established the Indo-Scythian or the Indo-Saka 
kingdoms. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about Bactria. So you get very uh, a very nice diverse unit roster, very flexible. Um, Bactria is pretty much uh, the best equipped uh, to fight the Saka and the Parthians uh, due to um, your excellent uh, spear units you have available as well as uh, your nice horse archers and uh, heavy cavalry. Uh, not as good as the Saka or the Parthian heavy cavalry, but can counter them at least as your infantry mop up theirs, right? So, and then as the Indo with Indo-Greek troops and Indian troops, you'll get elephants, you'll be able to march over your horsemen enemies uh, very well. So in any case, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about Bactria. I think I covered uh, pretty much everything. The reforms are pretty straightforward. Um, declare your independence from the Seleucids. Beat the Seleucids to a pulp. And then um, construct your... Uh, declare your independence. And construct the your real royal government building in Bactra. And then once you have that, you'll be able to upgrade your satrapies. Uh, your government buildings, and you can move into India, and you'll get access to Indo-Greek stuff, which is very cool. Uh, there is no special Indo-Greek um, government building, so I think I mentioned somewhere that maybe there's an Indo-Greek government building, but uh, no, I, I misread something. There's so much documentation, and it's also confusing, and some of the documentation is old, so there are some things that are just wrong in certain places. But uh, yeah, there's no Indo-Greek government building. There is, however, and uh, oh, so this is the first mission I just wanted to show you. So the mission shows up like this. You have to accept it, right? So I just accepted it and now it shows me exactly what to do, right? And then it says if you press the equal key, then it shows you the mission. So I'll press the equal key and boom. It says, defeat the two armies, one in Sagdia, one in Margiana. And then, um, yeah, so here they are. And they're not so, they're not so tough. They're not so tough. You can, uh, your starting armies will be able to crush them pretty easily. This, this first one has a lot of cavalry, a lot of horse archers, so you might take casualties, a few hundred casualties. Uh, and it'll be tough to chase them down, but once you get them caught in melee combat with your quicker cavalry, like the Arakosians or the Bactrian uh, horse archers or your Iranian cavalry, uh, you should be able to take them out pretty easily. And, uh, yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to say. But there is an Indo-Parthian government building. So, and of course, that'll be a teaser for my next guide, which will be about Parthia, of course. So you'll, I'll walk you through um, getting the Imperial Parthian reforms, as well as the mini Indo-Parthian reform you get, because of course, um, after the Indo-Saka kingdoms, or during the Indo-Saka period, uh, the Parthians were able to expand out here to the east, and they established an Indo-Parthia kingdom. One of the uh, the governors there established their independence from the Parthian Empire and established an Indo-Parthian kingdom. But in uh, EB2, you can establish an Indo-Parthian government, and that gives you access to nice uh, uh, Indo-Parthian units. Uh, so that's very cool. And same thing with Bactria. You get the Indo-Greek units, same thing with the Saka. You get access to Indo-Scythian units once you get to India. So I'm really glad that uh, this part of India is on the map. And actually, I will talk a little bit. I will do a guide video for Taxila as well, the Indian faction representing the Mauryan Empire, or at least part of it, um, because they have a nice reforms system as well. So in any case, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about Bactria. Let me know in the comments uh, what 
guides you'd like to see. I know people want me to do Romans. Um, I'll do the Romans eventually. I'm not a big Rome player, but I will do them. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Let me know what you think of this guide. Uh, please like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.